James Introduction The letter of James has not received the attention it deserves from the church. In fact, James Hope Moulton spoke of it as not, quote, a treatise destined for permanence, end quote. It supposedly survived only because it was generally accepted that James was the brother of Jesus. William Hendrickson called attention to the many echoes of Christ's Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7.7, 7, James 1.5, Matthew 7.11, James 1.17, Matthew 7.24, James 1.22, Matthew 5.13, James 2.5, Matthew 7.12 following, 22.39, James 2.8, Matthew 5.7, James 2.13, Matthew 7.16, James 3.12, Matthew 9.9, James 3.12, Matthew 7.1, James 4.11, Matthew 6.19, James 3.2. This by no means exhausts the relationship, however. The concern of James is the true Israel of God, Galatians 6.16, James 1.1. God's kingdom. Christ's Lordship, the law of God and the necessity of a vital faith along with works. The neglect of this book or epistle is startling. How else can we explain the failure to take the matter of unction seriously and to see its relationship to old and new Israel and to church history? See chapter 15, Unction. James is careful, for example, to trace speech to its origin in man's being, to his heart, speech, he insists, is revelatory of what we are, why then the very casual treatments of this? Hebrews stresses the necessary relationship between faith and life, faith and works. When James says that faith without works is dead, he tells us that faith is not a mere matter of words, but it is of necessity a matter of life. We are dead men if we no longer can breathe, and we are spiritually dead if our faith is unaccompanied by works. Too many churches are like graveyards because too many members have no living faith. The Christian cannot be, James holds, double-minded or, as contemporary psychiatry would say, schizophrenic. The schizophrenic is a non-functioning person. So too is the double-minded churchman. Quote, pure religion and undefiled, end quote, requires Christian charity and action. Anything short of this is self-delusion. James's letter is a corrective the church needs badly 